Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you two vocal reverb techniques that are to do with sidechaining. The first one is a technique where you sidechain the kick and the vocal reverb so that the vocal reverb sort of jumps up and down and adds a lot of movement to the track. And the second technique is where you sidechain the vocal and the vocal reverb together so that the vocal reverb ducks whilst the singer is singing and then it sort of swells up in between phrases. If this is your first time using effect sends or sidechaining, I'd recommend watching the video that I'm going to link at the top of the description and just here. It's a very quick introduction to sends and sidechaining inside FL Studio and that will get you up and running with it. If I had to show all that in this video, this video would just become really, really long. Anyway, I'm demonstrating this technique on our newest single right here and I'm just going to start with the first technique which is sidechaining the vocal reverb and the kick together. Make sure that you listen on some headphones or studio monitors so that you can really get the most out of this tutorial. So I'm just going to start by playing the chorus and I've just printed it out here and you'll hear that the reverb is just completely getting in the way, it's just a, a huge amount of reverb and it's just swelling on top of everything. And the problem here is that the vocal and the reverb and the track just starts losing all of its definition. The reverb is just swelling on top of everything and it makes it quite confusing because you've got all this heavy percussion and you've got this kick coming through, but it's not really doing anything. It's not commanding the track. So what you can do is use a side chain to try and control this reverb. So I have the main vocal going to this track here, the one that says chorus, and then I have it sent to various different reverbs and delays. And the one that I'm going to be using is this track 44 and this track 41. 41 is like a plate reverb, 44 is sort of a larger hall reverb. I'm going to start by playing it with none of the side chaining. Cause right here, we're creating perfect. Right here, look beneath. And the reverb just sort of trails on throughout the whole song. With the side chaining. Cause right here, we're creating perfect. Right here, look beneath the surface. If I add a few more tracks in and play it without the side chaining, Perfect. Right here. Look beneath the surface. Right here. and then with the side chaining, Perfect. Right here. Look beneath the surface. Right here. it just immediately adds an awful lot more movement and rhythm to the song. To do this technique, it's very important that you have the main vocal on one track and your, and your reverbs on an effect send on another track. So I'm going to go to where I have the reverb, which is this one here. And there's two ways to achieve this effect, really. You can use the Fruity Limiter plugin, like I've shown in the sidechain tutorial, and you can have this set up to be controlled by the kick, so that every time the kick hits, volume is taken away. Perfect. Right here. Look beneath the surface. Or if you just have a four on the floor kick like this one is, you can simply use the Gross Beat plugin on the side chaining preset and then just pull these tokens up a little bit. Perfect. Right here. Let's do a before and after comparison. So without the reverb side chain, then with it. So let's start without. Perfect. Right here. Look beneath the surface. Perfect. Right here. Look beneath the surface. It's very apparent when you start listening to the percussion and sort of getting behind the groove of the track, the one with the side chain just bounces a little bit more and the one without just sort of swells and doesn't really make as much sense. Especially on the end of the word surface, it just bounces up and down with the side chain an awful lot. Fast. There are loads of ways to implement that technique. You can use side chaining on a compressor or you can use the gross beat plugin as I've shown in my side chaining video. But this example is more to show you that it's a good tool to have in your toolkit in case you need it. Would you want to do it in every single reverb? Absolutely not. A lot of the time this wouldn't make any sense, but when it's a sort of bouncy electronic pop song like this, it really fits in well. So let's talk about that second technique that I mentioned at the start, which was making the vocal reverb duck when the singer is singing. 
and then making it swell up in between phrases. And in this song on the verse, we had an awful lot of reverb because we were trying to make it sound very spatial and just generally special, I suppose. So in this case, to try and control it, there was two things we did. One was some volume automation to actually ride up the volume of the reverb in between takes, but there's also some side chain compression going on. So let's take a look at which tracks we're using. We're using track 31, which is the verse, and then I'm really looking at the whole reverb, which is on track 40. Drowning out the darkness without a light. So if I go on to the whole reverb, I have a fruity limiter set up, and it's on the compression side, and then on the side chain input, I right click and I've selected the verse, and what I've done is lowered the threshold and increased the ratio until I have some compression going on when he's singing. Drowning out the darkness without a light. None of it matters, no, none of it matters by our side. Hopefully you could hear the result there, but what you can also see on this graph is that as soon as he starts singing, the vocal reverb ducks down, and then as he stops singing, it starts trailing up again, and all of the volume is allowed through. Sometimes this is a really good way to keep the main vocal sounding clear and distinct, so that you can actually make out what words are being sung, while still having this really spatial and, and wide and, and consuming reverb flooding up in between each phrase. In this song, what we ended up doing, along with the side chaining, was actually just automating the volume of the reverb as well just to make it either, even smoother so we would take the reverb down when he's singing and then at the end of a phrase just sort of flood it up Drowning out the darkness without a light. and when you play everything else along with it Drowning out the darkness without a light. it just gives this really special effect here but when he is singing there's not like the reverb isn't consuming everything you can still make out what he's saying Whereas if the vocal reverb was high the whole time, like it would be, the darkness a light. it would just be a complete mess. Everything might sound really cool for a second or two, but you really can't make out what he's singing and you lose a lot of the special qualities of the voice as well. Depending on your song, the singing style, the tempo, and which compressors you're using, you might find it a lot easier to use the sidechain compression method where you set it up, or you might just find it a lot easier to just make an automation clip and control the volume with that. I don't particularly favour one technique over the other, but sometimes I just really can't get the compression working and it's actually just quicker to draw it in with automation, and sometimes you can set the compressor and it just works for you really well. And the most important thing to remember with both of these techniques is that all the time I'm just trying to do what I think or what we think is the most appropriate thing for the song. If the arrangement was a lot more sparse in the chorus, I wouldn't be doing crazy side chaining on the vocal reverb, I would just be letting the reverb um, sort of decay out naturally. Um, but because there was this heavy electronic kick and there's these synth stabs and this sort of uh, groovy bass line, and it makes sense to have it acting as a rhythmic part of the song as well, because I don't often view reverb as a rhythmic element. Delay makes sense because it's timed and you can have all sorts of crazy rhythms going on But with a reverb we tend to just view it as you know extra space width or depth But using side chaining on a reverb you can actually make reverb become a rhythmic and moving element of your mix And it's just something to keep in your toolkit So I do hope those two techniques will help you out Just add them to your toolkit and just remember that they're always there to use if you need them And I just wanted to say that I will be doing a lot more FL studio tutorials very soon I have some really big ones planned, I'm just working away at them. But thank you very much for watching this video, and I do hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.